Hey everyone, my name is Marissa. Welcome to my divination channel. As always, these intros are sometimes challenging for me to convey the absolute honor that it is for myself to be entrusted with these very intimate aspects of your guys' journey. And the more that I work with you guys and the more that I meet you guys and the more that I just walk my own soul's path as bravely as and as courageously as I can, the more that I am deeply inspired by the other beings out there as yourselves that are so intentional and dedicated and devoted and genuine about your life and your purpose and what you're here to do and what you're here to bring to the planet at this time and that just keeps me going and more and more I do see it's not even a question uh, for me the fact that we are all in this together and as I become more free that affects you guys and as you guys become more free that affects me and the rest of the planet it's all it really is um, all for one and one for all kind of game that we're on and so so grateful to be sharing this space with you guys today and this reading is really fun this was actually one that I offered a live private one-on-one -on -one reading with someone actually that reached out um, and I just felt called to try something different with this individual and we did this custom spread this five aspect <laughs> aspect spread about deepening intuition and I felt like it would be really fun to offer you guys these in a more general and um, I don't want to say less personalized because I'm sure you guys will extract and take away exactly what you need to from these very in-depth readings all about how to deepen your intuition. So you guys have three piles to choose from today. Over here to the very left is pile number one. In the center you have pile number two and to the right is pile number three. And whenever you're feeling ready, we're gonna go ahead and hop right into these readings. Hey, group number one, welcome to your reading for how to deepen your intuition. I felt inspired to do this whole spread real time. Um, so you can watch, you can stay and watch the whole shuffling process or you can just speed up to the portion where it's all um, done already and I'll probably timestamp this for you guys. But five aspects that we're going to address today the first aspect is how to develop your intuition, okay? The next aspect is how to be more receptive to messages from your higher self. The next next aspect is what clouds your intuition. We have what is it that you still need to learn? And lastly, an overall message from your higher self, okay? So before we get started, group number one, I'll just have you take a deep breath into your low diaphragm. Feel your low belly rise first and then your chest rise next. Go ahead and suspend your breath for a moment at the top. And whenever you're ready, go ahead and just release that inhale. Feel yourself become more settled in your being, your body. And let's go ahead and get started. So if you've done personal readings with me before, you know that I will shuffle each aspect out first. I shuffle a few times off camera and then um, I just do it as I'm guided, but at least one more time for each group on camera, okay? So I'll get all the cards out first, and then we will um, dive into this reading together in real time. Okay, so for spirit, we're asking for group number one. How can group number one better develop their intuition, please? How can group number one better develop their intuition, please, spirit? Okay, we have these two cards wanting to come up. Whoops, okay, next. We have how to become more receptive to messages from your higher self. So spirit, how can group number one become more receptive to messages from their higher self, please? Receptive to messages from their higher self, please. Okay. And I feel guided to take this one as well. All right, so what clouds group number one's intuition, please spirit? Clear, concise, accurate messages. What clouds group number one's 
intuition. What is clouding our intuition the most? Okay, this one looks prompt too. All right, so what is it that group number one still needs to learn, please, spirit? What does group number one still need to learn, please, spirit? And lastly, a message from their higher self, a collective message from the higher selves of group number one, please, spirit. Collective message from the higher self of group number one, what's the message, please, spirit? Okay. Awesome. All right. Okay, let's go ahead and get started. So, the first aspect of this reading, how can you better develop your intuition? First, we have messenger, serious energy, bringing harmony and balance. Okay, so first and foremost, I feel like for you, group number one, it's not to question what's coming through for you, okay? You are literally a divine messenger for the planet. I feel like, if anything, the main message here is, uh, you know, I'm being called to the title of a book that a friend that I met through like a this spiritual program channeled, and she hadn't channeled it yet um, in this group, but I just remember there was something you could, there was just something about this woman, <laughs> super tuned in. And this book that she ended up channeling, the subtitle of it is called Seeking Ends When Sharing Begins, okay? And this is something that I've learned that I will totally stand behind and can attest to in my own lifetime. It's almost like you start to create backup in your field, okay? And things, you start feeling dissonant, you start feeling off when you're not, A, when you're not allowing yourself to be guided by your own intuition in life. So when you know it's time to like get moving and act on something, you'll start to feel backed up. Things will just feel off. But the same thing is with when spirit is wanting to give you more clarity, right? Or to utilize you as a vessel. I'm, I'm hearing it's part of your purpose in some way to be a vessel of divine clarity for people around you or for, or for the planet. And so there's a lot here about opening your throat chakra and letting yourself be seen, letting yourself be heard and emptying out what it is that is already within you, all right? Emptying it out, sharing it, and more messages come through you. You will begin to have space for more clarity and more messages, but you are a divine messenger, okay? And so it's, it's really giving yourself permission to, you know, allow yourself to speak from a grounded place of love, speak from a grounded place of truth. And sometimes it doesn't feel like that. Sometimes bringing harmony and balance to a situation requires you to be a bit fiery and requires you to be kind of firm and to come off as almost like this queen of swords type of energy, okay? Um, where it's just like, yeah, it just seems like, the reason I bring up the queen of swords is because the thing about the queen of swords, it's like the feminine or the female, or regardless if you're male or female, like I feel like the beings that are drawn to this in particular, I'm getting this sense that you don't like to hurt people, that you're pretty empathic yourself. You don't like to hurt people. You don't like to be the bearer of bad news or, you know, or like you don't like to be someone that oversteps boundaries. You understand that everyone's living in their own paradigm. You don't like to overstep that. However, you know, when the, the queen of swords archetype is like, you would expect the queen archetype to come across a little bit more warm. And so it can almost catch people off guard more when you get this kind of like straightforwardness from the queen versus the king. You kind of, you know, it's like kind of assumed or it's more, um, it's less shocking to the system when it's the king. But when it's the queen, it's, it just feels like different. It just feels like, wow, you know, it just feels, um, to me, it's pretty badass, honestly. But this is what I'm getting that you guys, um, might care a lot about how you make other people feel. And I love that. That's honorable. And we definitely need more people like that on the planet. And just keep in heart that even when you're being firm and you think you're being mean, you're like being very neutral. Okay. When you, and you're 
expression to people. Okay. So I feel like just the main message here, what's blocking your intuition or how can you continue to develop your intuition is by sharing what's already coming through and acting on what's already coming through. Next, we have Arcturus energy, physical and emotional healing. So uh, yeah, a big part of um, why you might reserve speaking your truth is because you have memories within this lifetime and other lifetimes where you were cast out for doing so, or you started owning, you know, the throat chakra is not just about speaking, it's about soul embodiment, right? It's about honoring your full expression um, and allowing more of your soul signature to come through and to work through you. And so I'm getting the sense that maybe something happened early in incarnation or you've always been that black sheep, okay? And, and you're like, you know, kind of on a subtle level, still a little bit repelled from the idea of black sheeping yourself again, you know, but it's just, this is what happens. This is, we've had so many different types of divine messengers that come to the planet and want and attempt to restore the Dharma, which I see these are the codes in your field, right? To restore the Dharma on the planet. And one of the ways that we restore the Dharma is through understanding what the planetary karma is. Okay. And so you might have dealt with some of that planetary karma where you were bullied, maybe physically, mentally, emotionally, it could be friends, family, um, all of the above. And so where there's a little bit of resistance of just like owning who you truly are because you had a moment or moments where you showed up as your bright, most authentic self and it was ridiculed. It was um, top down. It was, you know, something happened to where you bought into the belief that it is not safe to be who I truly am. And I'm here to tell you, pile number one, we need you to show up as you truly are. You know, and the strongest warriors amongst us have known the greatest darkness and the greatest suffering, um, especially at the hands of the people that we've loved the most, you know, and uh, at least that's the main theme on the planet at this time. At a different time, it could be a different story, but that's one of the main um, collective archetypes and karmic archetypes, I guess I could, sh I should say. So speak on it, act on it, give yourself permission, understanding that the healing happens as you do it. It's not waiting for yourself to be perfect, not waiting for yourself to, you know, for your voice to, to stop shaking or for you to not feel scared, right? It's like, you're going to feel that, um, you're going to feel it as you're healing it and just bringing awareness around those sensations as they come up and understanding it takes, you know, it, it will take some time, but it will get better. I promise it will get better. And you will start to see how, You'll have, you'll get to a, a place where you're like, oh my God, I cannot believe that like I ever <laughs> lived any other way than just speaking my most authentic truth and the, you know, um, as much as I can, because it just makes things so much easier. It's like, you're not tiptoeing around yourself and it just feels like it's such a relief, you know, it's such a relief and there's not paranoia and it's just like, I'm going to come as I am and other people's reflections about me is making my job easier, you know, because those are people that I'm going to start to, you know, maybe distance myself with and maybe they'll, they'll come around at some point. But, you know, it's like you guys are at a point in your incarnation where it's really time to honor this divine messenger archetype that you came to be. So next we're going to get into how to be more receptive to messages from your higher self. So we have moon take note of intuitive messages. You guys are so in tune. Okay. You are so, your intuition is so strong. All right. It is one of your gifts. You could be doing something similar in my field. You could be doing, you're, you're like a true mystic to where the subtle energies of life, the things that are happening on the more subtle planes, the harder to perceive planes, the planes that you cannot perceive with the physical senses, right? The five physical senses, those planes are more real to you, you know, than maybe what's happening on, you know, this regular plane or most people, this third dimensional plane, how most people are operating. Right. So yeah, I'm hearing that you have a very strong connection to your intuition and how to become more receptive to messages from your higher self is taking note of those synchronicities, maybe even jotting down when you feel inspired to do something and, and sitting on it and noticing those things that continue to come back into your awareness that continue to come back into your consciousness you know, those aren't by accident. They say that your calling is, are those things that continue to call to you. 
And it's not those things that like are here today and gone like a week later. It's like I've given myself permission sometimes to sit on things because I know myself. I can get really, really excited about something and then start it. And then it's like ends just as, you know, just as quickly. And so I'll give myself permission to wait like a little bit of time, you know, a few months or whatever. Um, and that's my indication that, okay, yeah, I can trust this. Right. And you get better over time at not needing to take as much space from those things because you're learning to trust your intuition more. You're, you can start to sense the difference between what's coming from the carnal conditioned mind versus what's coming from the divine mind, the, the higher mind, Right. And yeah, so this is all a process, right? And you are, you are highly connected. You have a great, you are very gifted in terms of your intuitive messages and you have a lot of clarity that you can bring through and help to soothe, bring healing for, um, the souls on this planet holistically. Next, unlock, uh, unlock, unlock the magic within. This is so beautiful. So a lot of this is really just about trusting yourself, really about acknowledging how, how tapped in you really are. Uh, maybe that's something that you don't know. I mean, it's kind of a shock to me just at how powerful and how clear to me it is that of your connection to your higher self. And maybe you just don't have much practice at actually executing on those things. And, you know, for whatever reason, or maybe for some of you guys, this is like confirmation of what it is that you already know about yourself. You know, there's something about your intuitive gifts um, and being able to unlock these gifts within and, and even being able to help other people unlock those gifts within. So I wouldn't, I would not be surprised. Like if you guys are in a field similar to mine or to where you're working with people on some sort of level where you're, you know, investigating the soul's blueprint or you're helping people understand how to deepen their connection to their intuition and to walk their soul's path. Uh, but overall, I feel like it's just about trusting yourself. Okay, really trusting what's coming through and, and sharing it with less and less reservation, okay? Knowing that sometimes, like, that these things, like, excuse me, you might have a fear of speaking up or speaking in groups or whatever, or, you know, some sort of, like, dissonance um, around that, and it does get better over time. It does get better, and a lot of the times I have noticed that the beings that are the most fearful of sharing their truth have the most wisdom to share, they have the most powerful wisdom to share, okay? And a big part of that fear, I feel like, is just it's filtered through that lack belief. I, take, I took a note that I said unlack, unlack, unlack yourself, unlack your beliefs instead of unlock because to me that's like the excitement from your higher self and the higher selves of other people that are going to receive your message. There's excitement because you can truly help instill light codes into people's auric field through your wisdom and through what you have to share. Okay. And so, yeah, I feel like that's the excitement that all higher selves involved are having because it's like, this is what we're here for. We're here to help each other, you know, walk each other home. We're on this journey together and to, you know, instill more light codes into the auric fields of our fellow brothers and sisters along this journey. So next we're going to dive into what clouds your intuition. So what clouds your intuition, pal number one? We have triumph. We have suffering and silence. We have patience and planning. We have balance. And lastly, we have movement choices and decisions. So there's something here about feeling like you could get something wrong. Okay, feeling like you could make a wrong decision. There's no such thing. It's like even when we like have an intuition of something and we don't act on it, like if you're at a point to where I'm very sure you guys are at on your journey, it's like you can gain something from that when you, you know, you can go back and reflect over, oh, that's interesting. I had the intuition to do something and I didn't. And wow, I see how I kind of missed out on something or wow, I had the intuition to not do this and I did it anyways. And now, you know, I went this way to try or I went this way to like on my way to go meet up with a friend and my intuition told me to take a different route and I didn't. I just like was like, oh, well, this is what I always take. You overrode your intuition, right? Those scenarios and you're stuck in now like half hour traffic because of it because there was a, an accident or something, you know, that kind of thing, you know, to not bypass these, um, these messages from that you're receiving from your higher self. Um, so what else is clouding your intuition? 
I feel like with the two sevens coming up and the suffering and silence, the sevens are all about contemplation. Okay. So I feel like what might cloud your intuition is that you guys might contemplate over decisions a lot longer than you need to, I guess. Like I, I, and I feel like it does come back to that fear of making a wrong choice. Okay. So I feel like it's, it's moving with this chariot energy that's coming through. It's, I'm having a hard time verbalizing this just because it's more of an energy that I'm feeling at this time. You know, when you move with conviction and you move like you know what the hell you're doing and you're just like, all right, I, there's no wrong decision I can make. And for whatever reason, I'm guided to explore this. You, you almost accelerate your timelines because when you're kind of in this neither here nor there, like, you know, kind of waiting energy. Um, yeah, it just it, it creates detours and not making a choice is a choice. All right. Choosing not to move in a certain direction is a choice. Okay, so I feel like there might be a fear of making the wrong decision. Oh, oh, I'm like, I have this inspiration to go this way. Can I really trust this? And then you feeling like you, you'd you be left to deal with the repercussions, right? There's also something here about you, like there's a lot of fears that you have that actually, you know, the nine of swords energy is are things that aren't really rooted in reality, right? And, and yeah, <laughs> And doing your best to, you know, restore balance in your field, to restore balance in your system. Yeah, I feel like there's a there's a strong message here about just making decisions when you're in a balanced place. And yeah, I feel like part of the fear comes from, you know, this journey that you're on or this journey that your soul is calling you to merge more with. It is one where it is kind of moony. It's it is kind of you know, the moon card to me represents there. You see this big, long path, right? And the whole path is you can't see the whole path. You can only see the next part of the path that you need to see, which is generally right in front of you. So maybe you guys are beings that kind of like to plan and kind of like to have this whole map figured out. And it's almost like the logical mind, you know, is I think it was Albert Einstein that said this, like, the logical mind is the servant and intuition is the master. Intuition is the gift is what he said. And he said in, in our culture, in modern society, we have put the servant above the gift. Okay. And so that's kind of what I'm getting a little bit from this. It's like, y you feel like you want to remain balanced and you don't want to be impulsive when you're acting and you don't want, you don't want to make an impulsive decision that you're going to regret. All right. However, I'm also really feeling and seeing and being guided to remind you that you guys are very much more in tune than I think you be, you can even recognize. All right. And that just take the next step before it makes sense. Okay. And then it will make sense after you do it. And then you'll be like, oh my goodness, more and more. Um, you'll see more and more how, wow, I can really trust this. Okay. I can really trust that this is you know, this is an overseer, the, my guides and my higher self. These are your o overseer for this lifetime. Okay. They know the shortcuts because they can see the whole game board. You know, you can only see what's right in front of you. That's what only what you're meant to see, you know, but in some sort of way, you are a divine vessel. You are a, a teacher of, of divinity. And so I'm not surprised that, um, I'm not surprised that as a teacher of the, these things that, you know, you kind of are going through those challenges and unearthings as well. So next we're going to get into what it is that you still need to learn. We have regeneration and we have peace. Yeah, I was getting this sense here about not making decisions from a place of anxiety or from a place of obligation or from a place of feeling like, um, you know, from a place of haste. Okay, not making decisions from a place of haste, understanding the difference between haste that is, you know, fear based and haste that is just like your soul is urging you in this direction and we need to heed it. We need to heed that, you know, urgency. Um, and with regeneration, it's honoring those tower moments, okay, honoring the moments where life, I feel like you, where you might convince yourself that life is not on your side or, honoring the moments where you do need to rebuild yourself. You know, 
it's it's quite interesting how parallel so many things in this like this existence so many things can be there's so many parallels to the soul's journey or to deepening our intuition or to trusting the voice of faith more and more and one of the my, the examples that I love to give is um you know as a fitness instructor in the past like how you get stronger physically right? You literally have to break down the muscle. And so when I teach classes, you would see people get what we would call the shakes. They would get the shakes to where they'd be holding a posture for a long time and their muscles would start to give out on them. And it it looked really intense, but you know, we're trained in this and we understood that that's the, that's the point that we want someone to go to is that point of failure. That's the breaking point. That's also the making point. Okay. And so I feel like one of the things that you still need to learn, pile number one, is to honor those cycles and to honor the moments where, you know, I feel like sometimes we think that intuition is linked to always knowing and to always feeling connected and to always feeling solid about our path. And that's not, that's not always how it is. You know, intuition is a surrendering, surrendering to life, a surrendering to the magic, okay? And surrendering to those breaking points because, you know, the more that you break or the the, to the same degree that you allow yourself to get to those breaking points when it's naturally what you're, you know, being guided to is the same degree that you will feel so much clarity and so much stronger around. Okay. So giving yourself, yourself permission to, you know, like just be a human, you know, giving yourself permission to make mistakes to whatever that means. Like that's just a man-made concept. You know, there's no such thing as a mistake. There's only an opportunity to learn. There's only opportunities to see where, you are in or out of alignment with your highest truth in each moment, okay? And so honoring your process of regeneration, honoring whatever cycles um, are in and out, you know, not needing to come across as you have it all together all the time, you know, sharing all aspects of you to the degree that you know people are able to hold space. You know, that's something that I also have learned as someone that never even, when I was younger, I never even shared like, the hardest things that I went through, like the hardest sufferings when I was bullied and when I was picked on and, you know, girls would deliver mean notes to me. I never, like I suffered in so much silence and, you know, I'm seeing more and more how honoring all aspects of the life of, of your life's experiences, giving voice to all of those things in spaces and containers to where, you know, this is an old soul. This is a wise soul. This is a soul that's not going to judge me. They're going to hold space, but this is how we build deeper connections, okay? This is how we regenerate our soul, okay? So again, I am kind of getting this, this feeling that, you know, there were some disruptions to your peace throughout your life, probably in earlier years. You did not feel peace. You did not feel settled. You did not feel like you had a safe place to turn to, to express your emotions. And I'm not surprised that I would see so much deep intuition because, you know, it just, that the thing with the empath that my guides showed me years ago is that, when you become so deeply attuned to, okay, is this person going to pick on me? You know, it's like you get so good. You almost activate your subtle psychic senses as a form to protect yourself and as a, as a survival mechanism. Okay. So now it's time to regenerate your nervous system, to heal, to find peace and to recognize that you are safe now. You are safe now. You might not have been safe then, but you are safe now. Your gifts are activated, and now we can use those gifts in a positive way for the planet, okay, to uplift the planet. So what you're still learning is how to bring peace to your nervous system, how to trust yourself, how to trust the cycles of life, everything that you've been in, how to trust the moments when you're in deep confusion, because on the other side of deep confusion is great clarity. So lastly, we're going to get into messages from your higher self. We have the Eight of Wands. We have the Strength card. Things are getting ready to move really quickly for you, okay? You're stronger than you think. You're more tuned in than you think. You've come a lot farther than you think. We have the 10 of Pentacles. So despite what you might feel or despite what you might see in your current life or your um, the evidence that you think you currently have, you are meant for great success. You are meant for a community. You are meant for your prosperous needs, your prosperity to be very abundant, very comfortable, I should say, to where you feel content, to where you feel like not too much, not too little. Like you feel like you can do the things that you want to do. You can go on the, the adventures that you want to go on. Like you're living your own like dream in this incarnation. We also have the nine of pentacles. Yeah. So there's an overemphasis here of 
um, sustainment. So maybe one of, there's a lot of practical energy here. So maybe you do have a fear that if I follow my intuition, my needs aren't going to be taken care of. If I follow my intuition, it's not going to work out for me. If I follow my intuition, it's, you know, it's so much safer to follow, um, you know, the, the road that's most traveled to follow the, the things that are in front of me that make sense to my logical mind. But the main message here is saying that I got you. Higher self is saying, I got your back, you know? And this is fulfillment, not just on what I love about the Nine of Pentacles. It's not just about, you know, the Nine of Cups energy is about emotional fulfillment, you know, which is amazing. We love that. This is also talking about emotional, but everything else, like feeling um, self-sufficient, being able to provide for yourself, being able to provide for your family, for, you know, people that it just resonates to, you know, when someone's having a hard time to be able to, hey, like, I got dinner, you know, or like, you know, let me cover a month's rent for you, something like that, you know. And so I feel like you have a very generous heart. You're a messenger of, of divine love and generosity. And um, yeah, I feel like things are either getting ready to move quickly for you, or you can feel some change beginning to happen. There is like, kind of this, urgency almost that I am feeling from this group. And lastly, we have the six of swords. So things are going to turn out better than you expect. Okay. I'm glad that we saved that for last, for last because, um, you know, that's kind of the energy that I, I was already getting that there's some things that have happened in your life or in other lifetimes that is, are still stored in your field to where you felt like, you know, things didn't go out, go how you wanted them to go. Um, or, things turned out really messy, you know, and you, there's so many different reasons for that. There was generational karma. There was, you know, planetary karma. There's all this stuff, but, you know, I feel like the spirit is really reiterating that the scales are tipping for you and you're about to, you are on the brink of a new paradigm. If you're not already feeling those energies, if you're not already in it, you're on the brink of a next level of existence to where you're not just speaking about these things. You're not just hearing about other people who speak about these things about you can't have the life of your dreams. You know, you're not just hearing about it, but you're living it. You're living proof of it. Things are going to turn out so much better. And this is about overcoming those obstacles internally, those internal and even external. But to me, strength is more of those internal battles that no one else knows about. Okay. Those internal battles that we suffer alone. Um, and probably a big reason for that is because you are a very wise soul. You are an old soul and you know that not everyone can hold the type of space for you that you require just because you tend to see a lot farther and a lot uh, m much more beyond where other people can see. Okay, so pal number one, I hope this brought clarity, confirmation, and peace to your heart today. If it did, go ahead and leave that dove in the comment section. That's one of my favorite. Talking about peace, literally, and freedom. Okay, let's leave that down below. That's also your confirmation or your proclamation of you're going to not question anymore and you're just going to follow what feels right and speak your truth, okay? Powerfully, unapologetically. Give this video a thumbs up and I do hope to see you again on my channel soon. Pile number one, much love. Hello, group number two. Welcome to your reading in regards to deepening your intuition, okay? So if you've done personal readings with me before, you kind of know how I set it up, and I was guided to do this similarly to my personal readings. I pre-shuffle everything off camera a few times, okay? And then I'll shuffle like once or a few times on camera as I'm guided to. You're more than welcome to stick around for this process. I know that some people love to see the shuffling and it can be very soothing, but I'll also leave a timestamp if you just wanna jump straight into the reading, all right, pile number two. So before we get started, I'll just have you take a big inhale into your low belly, feeling your diaphragm lift first, and then allowing your chest to lift second. And when you can bring in no more new oxygen, I want you to suspend your breath at the top, feel your crown open, and go ahead and release. Exhale, settle into your body, becoming more present. All right, so just to get into each aspect of today's reading pile number two, up here we have how to develop your intuition. Over here we have how to be more receptive to messages from your higher self. We have what clouds your intuition, and then we have what you still need to learn as well as a message from your higher self. Okay, so let's get right into this reading. We're gonna start with how to develop your intuition. So spirit, those guides overseeing, the group of souls drawn to pile number two. How can pile number two develop their intuition, please? How can pile two develop their intuition? Okay. 
And I don't know if I said this, but I like to get everything out first. Yeah, I think I did. Okay, next we're going to get into spirit. How can pile number two be more receptive to messages from their higher self, please? How can pile number two be more receptive to messages from their higher self, please, spirit? one two all right next we're going to get into what clouds pile number two's intuition please spirit. what clouds pile number two's intuition please clouds pile number two's intuition. all right what does pile number two still need to learn what does pile number two still need to learn Got it to this one as well. And lastly, what is the message from the collective higher selves of this group? What is the collective message from the higher selves of this group, please, Spirit? What is the collective message. Okay, anything else? Collective message, please. The higher selves of number two. Anything else? Okay. All right. Let's get started. How to develop your intuition. Season Mintanka, seeing potential, bringing unconsciousness to light. Okay, there's something here about um, maybe not feeling as clear as you could be. Something about something about unearthing the shadow, okay? Or maybe you guys feel that you're not so sure what's the difference between your shadow. It's like you're not really sure the voice of your intuition versus the voice of your subconscious, or your unconscious mind. Another way of saying that is karma. It really is um, in my studies and just um, how I have seen these things or been guided to learn about these things the unconscious, the subconscious, and karma are really um, linked. They're greatly linked. I'm so sorry. My dogs are doing something. I'll be right back. Pile number two. Okay. Sometimes they like start to click. Like I, I'll hear them clicking a lot and I don't trust it. <laughs> okay. So something here about, yeah. So I was saying about karma and the subconscious mind. Those are essentially, you know, very similar ideas, you know, from different parts of this globe. So karma is essentially those things that they just seem like they happen. The, there's, they are those patterns that feel almost uncontrollable to us that when, if we were to operate on pure autopilot, you know, it would guide us in certain directions. Like we would be totally guided. We can be completely unconscious and still going about this world seeming seemingly acting upon free will. But at that point, it's just the subconscious mind, you know, those impressions that you've had, not just from this lifetime, but other lifetimes as well, kind of carrying themselves out. So I'm hearing overall, there's either, um, for you guys, we'll get more clarity as we go along this reading, but there's either like, you feel like you're not so sure which mind it's coming from, or a spirit is really saying that, how to develop your intuition is doing the work, right? Doing more inner work, doing more um, clarity work, uh, or just being bringing much more awareness around these patterns within yourself. Okay, let's see what else we have. Interesting, we have two like water themes here. So trusting your emotions or getting more in tune with the messenger, the messengers that your emotions bring or the messages that your emotions bring. Okay. Deepening. I, I did see something about deepening, like, um, giving yourself permission to deepen your understanding of yourself or to take moments to where you just feel like, you know, how do we deepen a relationship or a connection with anyone else? You know, we spend time with them and we get to know them. We give ourselves permission to be curious about the person. We ask questions and we want to, in order to have a really solid bond with someone, it's like, 
you go deep with them. It's not staying on the surface of things. So how to develop your intuition is, is going deeper into yourself is what is required. At least at this point in time, it doesn't matter where you are at, at on your journey. So taking, taking space, all right, letting your, your field separate from the fields of other people and taking more time in solitude. Okay. We have share your song frequency of sound diving deep. Okay. So that was part of this message. Absolutely. So going deeper, Okay, and this is kind of a similar message as pile number one with just the analogy I'm going to use. But there is, I had a friend who channeled a book called um, Seeking Ends When Sharing Begins. Okay, so it's really important that in order to deepen or to develop your intuition, you're sharing what already comes through. And you know what happens with me, you guys? And this is so beautiful. Like, I have moments where I just pause and deep gratitude and deep appreciation when this type of synchronicity happens, when I start to get a download about something and it sets me free in a certain way, right? But sometimes when we get downloads, because it's not coming from someone else, for whatever weird reason, we feel like we can trust it less. But you should trust those messages that are coming from yourself even more because it's coming from yourself, right? This is, and you are someone you can trust. You are someone that you have your best of intentions for, right? And so it's, it's just so interesting. So I'll have these moments where I'll get these downloads that are very profound to me and they set me free to a certain level and I start to share them. And you know what? What happens within like a day sometimes, within hours sometimes, within sometimes a week at the very most, I'll get an external confirmation of what I just said. And because I owned it and because I'm like, yes, this feels right. This is what is right for me. It's like that external message comes in and my guides are like, yes, good job. And they're like, you can continue to do this. It's almost like trust it. It's almost like um, they're cheering me on or they're cheering you on that. Yes, you can trust yourself. Yes, you can trust your innermost wisdom. You can trust what comes from the depths of yourself, the depths of your soul. That's what, that's the journey we're all on. That's why intuition is so important. We all have intuition. All right. It's always working for us. It's always working in our favor. And it's about those moments when we're acknowledging, okay, I had an intuition to do something. I didn't, you know, Oh, and this is what happened. Okay. You know, I'm going to reflect over it. Going to do better. Or I'm, I, or I'm just like, when something similar comes up, I'm not going to question it. I'm just going to go in the direction that I'm being guided. Okay. But there is something here about sharing your song. When we hear, when we think about orcas and whales, you have a very, um, there's something about the frequency that you're either communicating on or just the sound of your voice as you're communicating. You know, some people that I hear talk, I can fall asleep. Like they're just, just them talking is healing and they don't even have to be talking about anything profound. It's just the place that they're sitting in when they're speaking is so healing, you know, and, and there's something uh, about this with you, pile number two, there's something about your voice. There's something about what you do have to share when you do share. It's very healing. Okay. Yeah. Something about frequencies and taking people into the depths of, of themselves, inviting people into the depths of themselves. Okay. So yeah, bringing unconsciousness to light. And we do that the more that you know, we act, you know, it's kind of a trial and error thing. You know, you have to be okay with this, you know, utilizing earth for what it is. And it's a school. It's all a reflection. It's all just consistently giving us feedback. Okay. Yeah. Feedback that is very relevant because, you know, these whales operate on getting those, what is it? Those like feeling those waves, you know, like sending it out echo location. Is that what it's called? Yeah. Something like that. So giving yourself permission to, you know, just voice it when it feels right, when it's coming from the depth of your soul, it's not regurgitated. It's you, it's your own access point and you'll be so surprised. And I feel like that can, is really going to speed up this, your timelines, you know, for whatever reason uh, that just felt relevant to come through. So next we're going to dive into how to be more receptive to messages from your higher self. So we have Oracle, wait for important information, giving yourself time to pause to really reflect. Okay. Something that's continuing to be reiterated, um, not acting like as you're developing your intuition, your guides are saying, giving yourself permission to pause as long as you need to until you're like, okay, this really feels like what I'm supposed to do. It's not impulsive. It's not whatever, you know, this feels like relevant for my timeline. This feels relevant. And more and more you, you have to pause less. Right. And sometimes, you know, I'm, I'm still surprised when 
when things come into my field and I'm feeling unsteady about it for some reason. But one of the reasons why I'm unsteady about it or I'm unsure is because it's linked to like some sort of risk, like a financial risk. I'm like making a financial investment in something or whatever. And so like when you're getting clear about your why, you know, it's knowing what your why is, is a really good way to help develop your intuition. Okay, because it's like, okay, does this fit into my framework of what I know I'm deep down, what I know I'm here to share, what I know I'm here to express? And if yes, okay, then I can tell, you know, this part of this bringing unconsciousness to light, I can tell my hesitation is because I'm afraid of losing out on something. I'm afraid that I'm going to make this investment. I'm going to regret it. You know, it's not coming from the higher mind. It's coming from my conditioned mind. That's part of how you're bringing this unconsciousness to light. Okay, so understanding when you're waiting because it's like you just truly are unsure. You don't want to make an impulsive decision. You're not sure if this is my karmic mind, you know, my subconscious mind or the divine mind, giving yourself permission to, to pause. And other factors might come in. You know, I've had it. I'm so grateful that I've learned this lesson because I have like saved myself, I guess, from disappointment to where, you know, I gave myself to permission to sit on something and even though I was like, okay, I should just do this. I just should just go for it. But then something even better came along. Okay. So it's like this very delicate and subtle game that we learn to play. All right. And so giving yourself permission to, you know, don't wait too long, but give yourself permission to pause. Next, we have shedding old skin. I love the snake archetype. So becoming much more receptive to messages from your higher self. Again, there's a lot here about shedding your unconscious and, and shedding old behaviors, old patterns, old ideas of yourself too can absolutely um, create some inhibitions or debris between your lower mind and your higher mind. So maybe even your own narrative of yourself needs to change. Maybe you have a narrative that says, you know, oh, I'm not that intuitive or, oh, I don't have much wisdom to share. No one wants to hear me, you know, something like that. Or like, Oh, it, things always seem to go wrong when I try to follow my intuition. Okay. It's like letting go of that garbage, you know, that might have, you felt that might've been genuinely part of your experience for some time. Um, Ooh, okay. This is good too. Some more messages are coming through that m absolutely may have been your experience of yourself, but it doesn't have to remain your experience. Okay. And there's other reasons for that. It's like, as we bring more light into our field, it invites more of those unconscious things to come to the surface, okay? And next, in terms of how to be more receptive to messages from your higher self, like, I feel like it's important to, yes, you can utilize tools like oracles or tarot, you know, tarot, whatever, and not to do it as if you're seeking new information, but to notice and to take note of those moments where, you can see, or it's so obvious that it's confirming to you what you already know, okay? And and noticing when you're maybe like relying too much on those external forms of, of guidance, you know, because this journey that we're all on, pile number two, is a journey of trusting yourself more and more, of going in, you know, getting, unearthing the God within even more, bringing that unconsciousness to light. That's essentially those things that inhibit our recognition of the God within and being able to feel like convicted and faithful and acting on those messages from within. So you're not relying so much on external sources. Okay. And, but you know, if you need to, there are great tools, but that's, you're, you're not using that as a crutch. Okay. You're giving yourself permission to like put together all of the synchronicities and all of the ways that they come. All right. Yeah. Okay. So let's see what's coming up next. We have what clouds your intuition. I want to move this so you guys can see this. What clouds your intuition? First, we have awareness. Next, we have patience. Next, we have financial material changes, fertility, disruption, and we have power. We have power with strength here. Let me try to get these all in the same frame. I feel like there is maybe an underlying fear, part of this unconsciousness that we're bringing to the light is that 
if you act on these things that you are receiving, if you act on these intuitive nudges, I feel like there's a deep part of you that understands things are going to change. And you might there might be some fear about how that's going to disrupt some things, like current structures in your life. I feel like maybe even you can feel your intuition is guiding you to make some changes okay, in life and you haven't been acting on them. Maybe it's like you're waiting for the next shoe to drop. You know, there's like this delicate balance of waiting to when it feels right. And then we're just waiting because we're waiting for everything to seem like all the green lights are there, you know, and I feel like for any worthwhile journey, which is the soul's path is a very worthwhile journey. It's, we're not always going to feel like those green lights are lit up. And part of it is because there might be some unconscious patternings that are at play that will make themselves aware, but no sooner than when we act. Okay. And so that's kind of this energy that I'm feeling for you guys is that there might be some sort of um, fear of not being able to overcome obstacles that present themselves to you when you start to follow these nudges. And, you know, it's like spirit is really reiterating in this moment that you will be given what you can chew. Okay. You won't be given a bigger bite than what you can chew and to have having patience for your process. But I am getting overall that you you're being guided to move in a new direction. I feel like you've been guided to like move and to upgrade Okay, to upgrade your external surroundings, to upgrade your internal environment. There's a lot here about shedding an old skin and about um, like stepping it up. And so I feel like you have been patient for some time or you're wondering how, you know, you're waiting for those green lights. And I feel like, you know, there's a big message here of the time is now. Okay, and that maybe there's also a fear of like, how long is it going to take? You know, how long is this going to take for me to like see the see the sprouts of these seeds that I'm planting. And that's, you know, spirit is much less worried about the form. Spirit is much less what worried about what's happening on the external reality because in this university, this YO university that we are all in, it's all about energetics. It's all about what you're integrating on the level of the soul, okay? And how much of your soul you're actually allowing to come through this vessel despite what... um you know, conditionings might still exist within your current paradigm. And so I feel like you've been patient and you've been waiting maybe for some time. And I feel like it just, you just might understand or you might deeply feel that the more that you own your power, the more that you step into your true power, the more that things cannot remain the same. And I feel like it's an excitement for you that might be filtered through again, an unconscious belief of, you know, how is this going to work? How am I going to do this? Okay. And this is the path that we're on. It's about deepening your faith and, and opening up to the voice of your soul more and more. Okay. So no matter how disruptive the next change is, or the next step seems to be, you're going to trust it because the payoff is always so much greater than the initial fear or the initial hesitation. All right, so next we're going to dive into what do you still need to learn? Co-create. So how to co-create with the voice of your higher self. Yes, this is very much so about intuition. How do I, how do I, how can I truly lean in to that voice of my higher self? Okay, and, and can it truly create for me the life that I'm here to live? You know, and this, there's a lot here about giving yourself permission to become, becoming much more aware of your true soul, your true soul signature. Okay. Because the more, again, you're aware of your why and, and kind of what your soul's calling is, the more that you're going to act on behalf of those things. And, you know, it's not even a question. It's like, okay, yeah, I see how I was hesitant because I was afraid of security or I was afraid of something you know, that's rooted in this more primal, lower nature, you know, which is not negative. Like we all have phases and stages for a reason. It's like those, we need to build a solid foundation, right? And so, but once those things have served their purpose, we can shed those ways of existing and stepping into a higher form of awareness. Okay. And so 
it's like what something you're still learning is what this process of co-creation really is about. So when you feel excited about something, when you get a download about something, when something continues to come up into your field, acknowledging those synchronicities, having an awareness to acknowledge those things, it's not on accident. And okay, what? It, how is spirit trying to co-create with me in this moment? That's what that is. It's spirit trying to, your higher mind trying to co-create with your experience here on earth. Okay, so you're learning how to do that more and more. To be fair, so balance, right? It's like being fair to yourself. I feel like you're still learning how to, you're, there's um, karmic, again, there's so much here about karma, karmic scales tipping. So I feel like there's a, multi, there's a layered message here of like, you know that certain things, certain timelines like are opening up to you, okay? And you feel like, you might even feel like you're not quite ready, but things are ramping up or amping up for you. Okay. And so there's a message here that when those new doors start to open, you know, and when that you've gotten the cue from your higher self, maybe not all the green lights are there that you need, but you really feel, okay, it's time for me to start moving. I've been patient and now it's time for me to start moving that you do it. Okay. And that you do whatever you can to prepare yourself now for those changes. So even if you feel like, okay, I can't move until next year. Well, I'm going to start selling. I'm going to start donating. I'm going to start dumping, right? Whatever um, is getting you solidified to that timeline of where, you know, where you deeply feel that your higher self continues to, you know, whisper to your soul. I knew this was going to come up because when I saw this cheetah, I, th I heard go the distance. So yeah, this is really about like what you're learning is to not get swept up in the moments of doubt, to not get swept up in the moments where things get confusing. It's like, understanding this life as a marathon and less as a race. You're not taking your cues from the little um, obstacles along your path, the small disruptions. You're not taking your cues from the small moments of discomfort because you have the bigger picture in mind. What am I here for? Your guides keep coming back to this why, having this underlying why, being able to fall back on what am I here for? And that's how I'm gonna make my decisions. I'm here to uplift the consciousness of the planet. I'm here to become much more free. I'm here to, you know, it, whatever. You can make it about yourself. You can make it about the planet. It doesn't really matter. It's all the same thing. But this is about bringing bringing your unconscious to light, seeing these, how your default modes of operating are and not taking your cues from that, taking your cues from the higher mind, okay? So there's, I really feel like what you're learning um, in this moment is to have tenacity and is to um, continue to keep going and to, to, to seeing this thing, this journey that we're all on as a journey, to seeing it from a different perspective and knowing that you have the tools. This is really saying you have the tools available to go the distance, that your intuition, it's not like you stop running out of intuition. That's not how it is. It's like you can get backed up when you're not acting on the messages spirit has already been bringing to you. You can most certainly get backed up and it can create turmoil and confusion in your life because you're not taking heed of what your higher self is saying. But, as, but you'll start to notice as you start to just continue to move before it makes sense and you're going in those directions, it starts to flow very seamlessly and you're like, yes, I can freaking do this. Life has got my back. All right, so lastly, what is a message from your higher self, pile number two? We have the five of swords. We have the ace of pentacles. We have the sun. And we have the lovers. So this is all about illumination. Okay, this is about the life of your dreams is possible. The life of your dreams is waiting. And the life of your dreams, I feel like there's something coming in very soon. So I'm going to have to cut this short soon because I'm at 2% on of battery life left on the device that I'm recording the sound or the audio. Okay, so overall, there's a new direction that is opening up to you. And this is about being aware and perceptive to those synchronicities, to those things that your soul keeps calling you towards, okay? Because this is your higher self wanting to co-create with you. This is your higher self beckoning you towards a brighter timeline than where you're already at, towards better relationships, people that understand you, people you don't, that you don't have to tiptoe, you know, around, tiptoe your truth around, okay? You're getting ready to shed a significant skin. Karmic scales are tipping, and I feel like this is really exciting. No matter how long you've been on this journey, whether you're a newbie on this spiritual journey or whether you've been on your journey for decades or you know years, whatever, it doesn't matter. There's a new paradigm that is opening up to you and it's really important that you are being open and aware of these new opportunities, these new directions, okay? And it is going to change your situation financially, maybe even environmentally, maybe even the people that you associate with, new 
people coming in, something. Their seeds are being planted at this time and you might not see the fruit of it immediately, but it's like, follow that path. Go the distance, follow that path because it is going to lead to bounty. It is going to lead to abundance. It's going to lead to like, again, I see illumination when I see the sun. So you're going to know yourself better. You're going to have more clarity about yourself. You're not going to question yourself as much. All right. Your intuition is continuing to deepen as you expand, as you grow. And I do feel like a new timeline is opening up that has like the partners, the lovers, the situations, the friends, you know, like these aren't just things that, you know, people throw out there. Like I have nothing to gain from saying this is possible, but the more that I live my path, the more that I see it is possible. It is how it works. And it's like all about trusting that still small voice within, giving yourself space to develop a relationship with that still small voice within and leaning into it no matter what, no matter what anyone else tries to tell you. All right. This is a journey between you and God, you and your higher self. All right. So new timelines are coming. So be aware of those things waiting for important information. It's coming. You've been feeling this build up for some time and it's coming. Okay. Just watch out for those synchronicities and start taking action before it makes sense. Start moving in as many ways as you can before it makes sense. All right. Pile number two, I'm going to leave this here for now. I hope this brought clarity, confirmation, and peace to your heart. If this was your pile today, leave a cheetah emoji in the comment section or an owl. There's two owls here as well, or a snake. Yeah, whatever one let's leave it open in the air. And yeah, I do hope to see you on my channel again soon. Much love. Hello, group number three. Welcome to your reading all about how to deepen your intuition. Okay. So I'm going to give you a quick rundown that I gave group one and two. So I have this set up as I would do a personal reading. And so I am going to leave the option to fast forward. I'll leave a timestamp for the cards being completely out. Okay. But sometimes it's fun to switch things up and I also like, it's very soothing <laughs> when readers shuffle and, and whatnot. So I left this option in for today because this is a little bit of a different reading, longer readings. That's why there's not as many piles as there usually is because I knew this would be a bit longer. Okay. So this will be like, um, kind of the style that I do personal readings. So I pre shuffle everything off camera. I'll shuffle like once on camera with you guys for each section. I'll get all of the cards out on the table before we dive into the reading. So again, you can go ahead and fast forward if you don't want to stick around. But before we get started, group number three, I'll just have you take a deep inhale into your low diaphragm, feeling your low belly expand and then let your chest rise last. Suspend your breath at the top. Feel the crown of your head open and go ahead and release. Feel yourself become more centered and present and we'll go ahead and start. So we're calling upon the guides of those beings that will be tuning into pile number three. We're asking today, how can pile number three better develop their intuition, please, spirit? Those assisting pile number three with their highest timelines. How to better develop their intuition, pile number three. How to better develop their intuition. Okay. All right, next we're going to get into how can pile number two be more receptive to messages from their higher self, please do it. How can pile number two be more receptive to messages from their higher self, please? Okay. All right, what clouds pile number three's intuition, spirit? What clouds pile number three's intuition? What clouds their intuition? Okay, anything else? What clouds pile number three's intuition? All right. Next, we are going to dive into what is it that pile number three still needs to learn? What is it that pile number three still needs to learn? Okay. And that's it. Oh, no, it's not. I'm like, what the heck? Like, that felt like there was one more. Okay. So a message from 
have the higher selves, the collective message from the higher selves of those souls that will be drawn to this pile, please, spirit. What is the message from the higher selves of those souls drawn to this? Okay, I'll take those cards. All right, let's get into it. Now we're ready. Okay, so how can pile number three develop their intuition? First, we have the seven star sisters, birthing creations, tapestry of life expression. It's so interesting that different cards came up in different ways for this um, similar message, but it's embodying your intuition, embodying your truth, giving yourself permission to birth those things that are being guided to be birthed through you and not even worrying about what like the end result is going to be. Okay, not getting caught up in this results driven mentality that many of us have been conditioned into um, that's a sure way to cut off our intuition and to dilute it and to you know kind of divert our attention from our attention from what is the most important aspect of life and it's living a devotional experience right it's just getting into that flow state um, because the more and in, in as many ways as you can find yourself immersed in that state of flow it's just going to be easier and easier for you to drop into the into that and it'll be easier for you to recognize when you are making decisions that are taking you into that flow state and when you're making decisions that take you away from it and to trust more of the decisions and the nudges that come to you when you're in that state of flow when you're in that state of connectivity to your divine mind or you know, we're always connected, but when you can really feel it, when you just feel the spirit of God alive in you, you know, and really trusting the messages that comes through when you're in that state and expressing those things, expressing what comes through in those states. All right. Sorry, guys. I had to pause for a moment because my dogs were making a lot of noise and that's a sure way to pull me straight out of this channeling state. Okay, so next in terms of how to deep, how to develop your intuition, we have Seas of Mintanka, seeing potential, bringing unconsciousness to light. So this card also came up in pile number two. I was wondering if we'd have any overlapping um, cards, but I feel like you know the main message with this that I've been, I kind of notice, you know, when I'm working individually with people, and one of the things that I just notice even in myself and my own journey, especially in the beginning and even sometimes still now, absolutely. It's like we can have a hard time distinguishing the difference between, okay, is this really my intuition? All right. And understanding that there's no wrong decision to make. Like we can't make a wrong decision, especially when you're doing your best to like follow the voice of your intuition. It's like, you know, God knows your heart, higher self knows your heart and you're divinely protected within those decisions, okay? And so I feel like there's a message here about just giving yourself permission to trust and to just, when you have an, ins uh, an insight or an intuition to do something, it's about just doing it, living out that expression of that intuitive message, of that guidance from God, that guidance from source, whatever you wanna call it, seeing the potential that exists within this, um, you know, this timeline that is being presented to you through this intuitive nudge. And is this in alignment with your soul's expression? Is this in alignment with what you feel like you're here to gift to the planet at this time? Because the people that are drawn to my channel, you guys are healers. You guys are here more so for the collective, more so for bestowing your gifts, utilizing your gifts and talents to help the collective. Okay. That's just really written within. It's not like, I don't know. Sometimes I see things like you're not here to save the planet, you know, work on yourself. And it's like, no, but some people do really have in their codes that they are here to save the planet. So, you know <laughs> what you can do with that message, <laughs> worry about yourself. <laughs> just kidding. So, you know, just do it, you know, give yourself permission to have an intuition and, or to, give yourself permission to live out what this nudge is because sometimes we have those karmic things that continue to whisper to us like it's like a deeper part of our unconsciousness is pulling at us it's like those karmic scales haven't quite tipped yet and so 
it's like we learn through trial and error. And so you'll learn how to distinguish that voice more and more by giving yourself permission, right? To act on those things. And so over time you start to notice what's just your carnal nature, your carnal mind kind of trying to pull you in a certain direction versus what is the voice of God? What is the voice of my higher self? And so we do that through, you know, you don't really know that you're in a cage when you're in it, right? It's only after the fact that, you know, the light of that awareness has been shown, you know, on that. And, you know, you can't free yourself from a cage that you don't know that you're in. So it's really about um, giving yourself permission to um, follow that direction and, and just taking note of the times when you have an intuitive nudge and you deny it, you, do, you go the opposite direction and the repercussions of that, okay? Noted, not good, not bad, not punishment, not anything. It's just, you know, it's just universal laws playing themselves out. All right. And so aligning more and more with that unit, the law of universality, which is when I'm following that intuitive nudge that is leading me to greater fulfillment, that's leading me to sustaining this connection, to widening the bandwidth between my limited self and my higher self. And as I'm leaning into that, as I'm trusting that more and more, things become better. Life becomes much more fulfilled. Things I find myself in that flow state more and more. Okay, so that's where your guides are um, nudging you towards. That's how to deepen your intuition is to spend more time with yourself too, to literally see what's beneath the surface and to see what are those subconscious patternings, you know, which is very parallel to karma. Those things that they would happen whether or not our will was involved or not. Like it's a, that autopilot. What would the autopilot version of you do? And to shine the light of your awareness on those things and really um, investigate, is this really the direction that I want to go? Is this really freeing me? Is this really allowing you know a freer version of myself, which doesn't mean we're denying those things that are hard, right? We're not denying those challenges because if something poses, seems to pose as a threat to us psychologically, spiritually, et cetera, we're not free, okay? And so utilizing all of the, this feedback in order to deepen your connection to yourself and to kind of eat up that karma, you know, and to not let it run you. So next we're gonna dive into how to become more receptive to messages from your higher self. We have be devoted and committed, yeah. So you're here for it, right? There's nowhere else to go. This is the, the path that you're on. The sage is also someone that takes time, space. They're more of like this hermity type of character, this figure. I'm also seeing the fact that this, this sage is writing things down. So sometimes like a big part of, or a really good way that you can learn to distinguish the difference between the higher mind and the lower mind or just like understanding more of your why is by writing things down. This has really helped me. And even it's even become like, sometimes I'll read past journals and it seems like I was scripting or something, but really what I was bringing through was the voice of my higher self. And so when you're more aware of what the intention of your soul is, and when you are writing from that place of like anything could happen and not letting your unconscious narratives kind of get in the way, those lack beliefs get in the way, you can really tune into that undiluted and, and very pure intention for your soul for taking birth in this life. And so seeing that on paper and being able to recognize that, call it what it is, it makes it much easier for you to recognize those things in your external reality that are in alignment with that um, soul signature, with that soul frequency. So being as committed and devoted as you can, like giving yourself permission to kind of geek out about it as well as what I'm hearing, like to not you know, to take it really seriously, you know, to give yourself time to take it seriously because, you know, it is a matter of like true fulfillment and, you know, fulfilling your destiny for being here versus, you know, sleeping on your potential. Next, we have take charge with authority. So yeah, there's a lot of divine masculine energy that I'm, I'm feeling with this. I also did see the fool card pop up somewhere. So this is very active. Okay. There's a lot here about expressing this and, a necessity to, you know, once you have taken your space and your time to um, write down, you know, and, and feel out how you, and taking note of synchronicities too, and those things that continue to call back to your soul, you know, to, once you get that green light to go, it's like, you're not questioning, you're not asking other people what they think about it. You're not waiting for some sort of permission slip outside of yourself. You're doing what you know internally that you know you need to do. There was this teacher, I forget the, um, the name of this guide, but there was this really, um, I feel like he must have been a profound teacher because he had like 50,000 followers at one time and then he left his body and 
right around the time that he was going to leave his body, his followers became very distraught. And I, I'm p completely paraphrasing. I just read this passage in my book <laughs> um, before turning on, but I love when that happens. I, I needed to take a little bit of a break and I'm like, something's going to come through for the next pile in this, in these next pages. But he asserted that, you know, his followers should n cease looking for their dharma outside of themselves. They should absolutely cease. And that's the message any great teacher will continue to tell you is that the next message you need to hear is A, right where you are and B, within you. All right. It's not something you're going to find without. Okay. And so that's one of the ways that you can become more receptive to messages from your higher self is to own them and to not question them, not to seek feedback from other people or to, you know, see if this is truth, if this is truth for someone else. No, all truth is relative. You know, all truth is absolutely relative. And so what is relative to your experience? What is truthful to your experience and to own it? Okay. And be devoted and committed to what comes through for you and the pathways that it then leads you down, you know, owning what comes through, owning the consequences, good and bad of, you know, doing, going, taking this earth curriculum, you know, but there is more risk in not taking not following the voice of your intuition than there is in following it. Okay. No matter how much the mind would like to convince you, it's the other way around. You know, it's more risky to sleep on yourself, to sleep on, you know, to not bet on yourself. So next we're going to going to get into what clouds your intuition. Pile number three, we have emotional withdrawal. We have more of this like emotional type of energy. So maybe like getting in tune with your emotions is, um, you know, if you have any blockages or resistance, I guess, to feeling everything that you need to feel, it's not that we're taking cues from our feelings because feelings are fickle. They come and go, but it's like learning to distinguish again, the difference between a passing feeling, a passing emotion. So like, Oh, like I'm pissed off at this person. I'm not going to go see them. This is something that's funny. This is coming up because this is something that has happened to me quite a few times. Now, you know, we have Mars and Gemini for the next seven months and I've definitely been noticing its energy, very fiery, very feisty and very like, you know, kind of like bitchy <laughs> with peace and love. And so I'm like, no, I don't want to hang out with that person, but like taking my cues from the deeper parts of me, like not taking my cues from those emotions, because I know it's like when I get around that person that I'm like, no, like, that person like said that thing and I get around them and I'm like, Oh my God, I'm so grateful that I did not follow the voice of my pettiness and that I allowed my heart to kind of guide the way, but also honoring whatever emotions needed to be there, whatever unconsciousness needed to bring itself to light, you know, to experience, to be held, whatever, giving myself permission to be angry. All of that is totally fine, you know? And, uh, yeah, there's something here about in terms of what's clouding your intuition, not making emotional decisions because that's energy that's always in motion. But again, taking cue of those things that repetitively come up in your awareness of, oh, if it's over time, you're like, oh, I should spend less time with this person because A, B, C, and D, that for sure is your intuition. Okay. And it, especially at those random times, you know, that's intuition being like, okay, this is something to pay attention to. How yourself is like something, this is something to pay attention to but not making those decisions when you're at like an emotional high or an emotional low, you know, giving yourself permission to let those waves settle, so to speak. So you're seeing more clearly for, so you're acting from a much more balanced place. So next we're getting into, oh yeah, same, same thing. Okay. So foundation and achievements, that one card felt like its own section. <laughs> okay. Next we have discontent and boredom. We have two eights and we have two fours. Interesting that there's more of like this heart chakra energy. So unlocking the heart more. What clouds your intuition? We have disruption, we have light, and we have the sacral chakra. Hmm, so there might be some like, uh, yeah, you guys might get hmm, I feel like there's something about following your intuition, like the voice of the divine that you might confuse with like, it should seem a certain way. I'm just getting this sense with the discontent and boredom and like this card, which reminds me of sexuality that it's like a symbol for me right now about like, there's a misperception you have about intuition that is not in real, like not in alignment with as it, 
like with what it actually is. It doesn't mean your life is, has to look a certain way. That's not what it is. It's an energetic thing and it's the place that we're coming from. So this doesn't mean that you are like being celibate or, you know, just using this example that's coming through. Like it does just because that's one person's highest guidance, you know, and one person's way to God doesn't mean that that's your way to God. And it's okay to honor the differences, you know, and not marrying yourself to ideas of how it's supposed to look or what it's supposed to look like. I feel like what's also clouding your intuition or at least clouding on your ability to act on it or your desire to act on it is because you might have, you might have a fear of disrupting a current environment or a, the way that things currently are. It's interesting. This is, is somewhat similar to pile two. So if you were drawn to this and you like were going back and forth between this pile and the next, I would definitely um, check that out, especially if you had that you know intuition of like you couldn't really make up your mind. But I feel like there's a fear of disrupting the way things are, even though you might be bored with the way things are. You know, intuition is here to Respark light, respark passion into our experience. And I feel like there's something to hear about like programs that were instilled in your belief system from a young age of thinking that, you know, what it means to be a responsible person, what it means to be a responsible individual. Maybe you have family to look after, or maybe you just are someone that prides themselves off of like doing the right thing. Okay. And I feel like there's a fear that you guys might have that when you start to follow your intuition that things are going to fall apart or it's not actually going to be able to sustain you. This is part of the unconsciousness that needs to be brought to the light in order to develop your intuition because it's almost like a deeper part of you, like your ego is serves as a gatekeeper. It's not negative. It thinks it's protecting you. It's, it's, it's one, one like desire and driving force is survival, psychological, emotional, right? Um, whatever, physical survival. And so I feel like it's acting as a gatekeeper um, from leading you down a route that you feel like will be like unforgivable or that you will regret later. Okay, so this is part of those like internal beliefs that can be at war with one another that doesn't allow us to make much progress. And so that might be why you feel like you're kind of in a rut or why it feels like things aren't moving the way that you want them to. And maybe there's also a deeper part of you that wants things to be shaken up, that wants things to fall apart um, because you're kind of bored and you're kind of over things being the, the, the way that they have been. Okay, so I feel like there's almost like this sense of you withdrawing from life and maybe even being in a rut and maybe even feeling like a little bit melancholy because you know, this is kind of my indication that spirit might have been guiding you in a certain direction and you haven't been as authoritative as you could be. You haven't been taking charge and going down those avenues to the extent and the degree that you could. Okay. And, um, it's all about following that light, following that, um, feeling, following the warmth. All right. There's a difference between knowing something in our gut is like what we need to do. And it might cause us a little bit of disruption. It might cause us to see parts of ourselves that we tend to avoid parts of ourselves that remind us of our insecurities or that, you know, remind us of certain things that happened in our childhood that we didn't like, or just, you know, that kind of bring up old narratives that we would love to be ready to let go of, you know, um, that's all comes along with the territory. You're at the voice of your soul. The path of your soul is going to grow you. It's going to stretch you, but there comes a point to where the gap gets so big between your, where your higher self is at, where your soul self like wants you to be at and, and where we have actually been playing at. It becomes so big that it can create this kind of like, again, it feels like discontent and like something just feels off and it's because higher self, yeah, like you feel like you're divided against yourself because higher self is trying to guide you in a certain direction and maybe you've been sleeping on it. And maybe it, it, you do feel like you want some more passion in your life and you want more excitement in your life and that's totally fine. And that's actually where higher self is guiding you towards. All right, but letting go of how you look could have been that symbol in the beginning about there was something coming through about like how it looks, okay? And so overall, it might just be giving yourself permission to release the messiness of some of, of 
the path sometimes when we're first starting to learn anything worthwhile or to remember, especially on this planet of so like the veil is so thick on this planet. And then we're reinforced by people around us that we can't trust ourselves, you know, even if it's not in overt ways and like subtle covert ways, you know, just picking up on their field of them feeling like that they, they can't trust themselves, not blaming anyone, but just understanding the mechanisms of this reality that we find ourselves in, these all are going to play a part. And so the more that you can be aware of all of these driving forces, the more that you can be sure that you are making those decisions from a place of empowerment, from a place of actualizing your highest will and not allowing the carnal mind to kind of take over. So I feel like, yeah, there's a big part of what's clouding your intuition or you might have been waiting so long or withdrawing so long or sitting on something for so long because there's like, you don't want to disrupt something like it's okay now and you don't want to disrupt. Okay. But it's like, spirit's like, but I'm taking you to better. I'm taking you to like so much better. So can we just let it fall apart? Because it's, you know, at the very least, it's going to bring some excitement into your life. You know, it's going to snap you out of this kind of autopilot energy that you might have felt that you're in just kind of going through the motions, doing the things, you know, that families do or that you're supposed to do, you know, and spirit is really trying to lead, lead you towards a new sense of foundation, a new sense of achievement, which is, um, true achievement is when we are actualizing those lessons that our soul came to actualize on. We're integrating them. We're allowing more of the soul stream to come through, come through. So what is it that you still need to learn? Pile number three, we have a message in a bottle. So this is about synchronicities. So you're learning how to take heed of the synchronicities, right? You're learning to dissect all of the ways that spirit and the universe communicates to you. Okay, so maybe you don't take synchronicities. You don't heed heed the importance as much as you could. Because it truly is a way that higher self communicates. It's one of the main ways that higher self communicates with us is through repeating messages through different messengers, okay? And seeing a certain sign or seeing a phrase on a billboard or seeing a certain time or, you know, don't underestimate or don't um, take for granted those synchronicities, those big and small ways that spirit communicates with you. So part of your learning process right now has to do with yeah, like seeing the synchronicities and that being one of the ways, okay, like it's loud and clear. I keep seeing this. I keep, my soul keeps being guided to it. My awareness is something that interests me. This is a divine messenger, okay? And and taking charge with authority, being devoted and committed to the path of the soul, not letting up, all right? And it gets easier over time to where people are like, how do you do it? And it's just because you understand life is always in communication with you. Life is always sending you messages through different messengers, but similar messages, even just like periods of what you're learning. Oh, my nose is itching like crazy. But even the same thing, it's like, there's no question of if this is a university. There's no question of how these things work because you'll notice the same messages continue to come to you and the same learnings, the same things continue to come to you because you're, you're drawing it. The codes that you have are, or that you're embodying or that are active, the most active at this point in time are calling upon those things to you. Okay, so next we have what is it that you're still learning to breathe. So to center yourself, to make decisions from a calm place right? To settle yourself enough. This also reminds me of, you know, what, um, meditation and breath work are here for. This is why I'm starting my own journey to becoming a certified facilitator of breath work and meditation, because I have seen real time over the years, been practicing meditation over seven years, introduced to breath work about five years ago. And what, what it has shown me is it is, these are powerful tools that we have available to us to, remove blockages between the limited mind and the higher mind. It removes the debris. So it makes it easier to hear the voice of God. Okay. So you're learning how, again, in all different ways to hear the voice of God, to recognize the voice of God, to recognize the symbols that source is sending to you along your path, how to center yourself. Okay. How to calm your nervous system. So we're not making decisions from a place of fear. That's part of this unconsciousness. When we're not in a calm place, we cannot hear the wisdom of our soul. And when we're not in a calm place, we're much more likely to make those decisions in haste that we might regret down the line. And again, there's no 
good or bad, right or wrong. There's nothing ultimately from the soul's perspective that ever sticks that is, you know, irreversible because, you know, this life is so short, it's so fleeting. You know, we're on to the next one before you know it. But there is something here about, you know, giving yourself place to feel settled or permission to feel settled so you know you're making those decisions, right, from a settled place. And the wisdom that comes through when your nervous system is settled, when your spirit is settled is much different than what's going to come through when you're in a place of feeling agitated and um, not at ease, okay? So next, what are you learning? Flexible. Something about flexibility. This might even be something about like, um, the physical vessel, like something about how tension and nervousness gets stored in the physical vessel. So you might be learning how to relieve tension from your physical body. This might have to do with yoga. This could do with um, exercising. Okay, so, and this also overall too, um, it is very layered because what you're also still learning is how to be flexible with yourself, how to be flexible with life, to not be so rigid, to not think that there's just one way to do things or that there's your options are limited. Your options are endless. They are unlimited, but if what you say goes because this is a co-creative experience with source, okay? And so being flexible with yourself, being flexible along the path, giving yourself permission. Okay, this is what felt right then. I see that I might've made a decision out of haste, out of impulse. Okay, I'm gonna give myself permission. I'm gonna be easy on myself. I'm gonna, I'm gonna try, I'm gonna do better next time. And you know, giving yourself permission to go with the flow of things. Lastly, we have orphan. So what you still need to learn that you are not forgotten. Okay, that life has your back. You will not be rejected. You will not be left out, okay? This might be some things with this, uh, you know, whole nervous system unsettlement that I'm seeing in these cards. This might be part of it, like an abandonment wound, okay? Might be one of the core things that you're here to heal within yourself and to help the planet also um, heal from is this idea that we've been forgotten, that things that have happened in our lives were not divine. I, I know that can be hard, if, especially if they were very painful, but from a higher level, there's like this trust that you got to have, man. And that the more that, you know, I've been through some very difficult things in my lifetime, my earlier years, especially uh, that I had to go through on my own as well. And that I, you know, caused me to withdraw and close my heart over and to feel very unsafe in this world. But you know what? The more that you expand your lens of perception, the more that it's expanded, the more that you see, oh my gosh, like what grace, right? And you become very grateful for these things because you understand when you zoom out, you see the divine plan and you understand, okay, I don't always know from this level how this is here to help me, how this is here to serve me. But I feel like a big part of this too is understanding and learning how to take these things, these traumas, these difficulties and, and utilize them as your dharma it's when karma becomes dharma and that's what many mystics and yogis and sages believe that our karma is here it's like our purpose is to take these karmic things that have happened within our lifetimes and and to allow it to uh you know show us where our dharmic path lies and that's you know something that any healer and any good teacher i feel like they're already even if they're not talking about it they're the example of they're the living example of taking the hardest things right so tony robbins really hard oprah really hard like the people that make the most amount of change and that you know on this planet and the brightest lights that i know generally what they're shining light on the brighter that their light becomes is on those things um you know that they had struggled with because they're the experts in that area because they have been through it right it's not just lip service so lastly this is a message from your higher self there's a new beginning that you're going to take a leap towards that you're going to go for, okay? And not question, right? You're just going to go for it. And it's something that you might have been receiving um, several synchronicities about already, signs about already, okay? To move in a new direction and something that's going to bring more light and get you out of this stale and stagnant place. Let's see. Yeah, new beginning, page of pentacles. So something to do with maybe how you're making money or people that you associate with, Okay, um, but definitely something like an environmental change. This is not like an inner new beginning. This is definitely an outer new beginning. We have the Empress as well. Yeah, big births creation, right? This is something that I feel like is really um, has long standing potential and will take you into this energy of feeling extremely authoritative, right? This is the Emperor card um, or this is a parallel to that Emperor card in this deck in particular. So this is about, you know, uh, a message from your higher self is you are being prepared. You are being 
ushered in a direction that we really hope you take that will put you in this energy of, you know, true courage is not about having no fear. Courage is about maybe having fear, which is just unconscious voices from the past, echoes from the past. It can be there, but you don't take your cues from it. You're still going to bet on yourself anyways. You're still going to do the thing that you know that you're meant to do anyways. Okay, so moving in a really good direction and the time is now is kind of what I'm hearing. Or when you when it, it's clear, oh yeah, I was thinking of the strength card when I just said that thing about courage. So yeah, when, the, when it comes to you, when it becomes aware to you what it is, and, and it's something that I feel like you will already have been receiving synchronicities about, or maybe even like, oh, I wonder if I should do this. You're going to get some sort of confirmation soon. And yes, you're going to take it. Okay. You're going to get that one last little push in that direction. And it might bring up some things that you have been carrying around from childhood, but you know what? Like it's going to be healed along the, on, along the way. Okay. Don't take your cues from that voice of fear. And yeah, saying that you're going to be grown, okay, message from your higher self. You're given everything that you need to overcome those internal obstacles. Strength, the strength card represents taming the beast of our insecurities. This is internal and external challenges, having the wherewithal to overcome those. So your higher self is saying, yes, you can do this. And lastly, we have the three of pentacles. So yeah, this has to do with like working with other people in some way, a mentorship program, some sort of new program or something that's going to uh, bring new people into your experience. You're working with other people. Maybe this is like to launch that program where you're offering something to the collective at this time. Um, something Again, it's that thing that that whole notion of courage came through to where the fear can be there. The imposter syndrome is always going to be there at every stage of your journey, of every stage of new, a new leap. Even though you could be, be taking leaps for, uh, you know, your whole life, you could be taking leaps. Or for the last 10 years, you can be taking leaps. But this is the process. We're always in a process of expanding, right? That's the nature of the soul. That's the nature of the soul's journey, okay? And so understanding that can, that can be there, that's actually a good sign. You know, that's that means you're moving in the right direction and that you have the wherewithal. You have the capacity to overcome these things. And awareness is key. So being aware of those things is also very important. But I am seeing you have many gifts to offer to the planet. Uh, and you came here, you know, to work with people in some sort of way or to, you know, affect the collective in some sort of way or to be on some sort of team. Okay. And I feel like spirit is nudging you in that direction. And this is part of that, your preparation for that and to deepening your trust into yourself and the universe and all. And just most importantly, in your path, in your soul's path. Okay. So pile number three, I'm going to leave this reading here for now. If this was your reading today, let's go ahead and leave a mushroom <laughs> for this fool card. Let's leave a mushroom in the comment section. <laughs> That'll be fun. Um, yeah, let's leave a mushroom in the comment section. Give this video a thumbs up. And I hope to see you on my channel again soon. Much love.